Here I'm just using a gravity feed spray gun to spray on a good wet coat of the wiping stain. I'll spray the entire back side of the door, then I'll come back with some clean rags and wipe off all the excess. Here I'm just using some uh, lint-free rags and I'll just wipe off all the excess. Spraying the stain on is typically not my favorite because it typically will make a mess on the floor, but because I was in such a time crunch to get this project done, I figured if I were to spray it on, come back and wipe it, make the project move a little bit faster. The rags that I'm using here are basically just a paper towel, shop towel. Um, I think they're either made by Jiffy or Ken Doll, um, but it's a lint-free shop towel basically is all it is, nothing too special. Using my gravity feed spray gun again, I'm just going to spray the entire cabinet in a nice even full wet coat, uh, starting with the front, working to one side, and then spraying the other side. As far as spraying on the stain, there's really nothing to it. The only thing I'm after here is to give it a nice, even, full wet coat. The wetter the stain you put on, the more workability and working time you have with wiping the stain. If you spray on too dry of a coat, the stain will dry too quick and you won't be able to wipe it off in time. If you spray it on too wet, obviously, it's just going to stay wet longer and you'll have more workability. Now using an air spray gun like this here, um, I have learned in the past that even if you give a good wet coat, it still has a tendency to set up a little bit quicker if you were to, to wipe it on. Just because of using the compressed air, you're actually flashing off some of the solvents in the process. Once again, just using some lint-free shop towels, actually looks to be a clean set this time, and just starting to wipe the cabinet. Basically, I start wiping with what I sprayed first and just work my way around the cabinet. Here I'm wiping the side that I sprayed second and I'll finish up by wiping the other side, which is the side I sprayed last. And just cleaning up the uh, last part of the cab that I sprayed, the uh, left end panel. If you look at the left bottom hand corner, it looks like there's a bit of a streak there. Um, it looks to me I didn't get the wipe stain on quite wet enough, but I'm still able to blend it out. Here I'm spraying one of two side panels for this cabinet surround project. And all I'm doing right now is I'm making sure to aim the spray gun into the corners of the panels to basically make sure that I get nice even coverage um, where the panel meets the styles and rails. So that way if the any of the wood were to expand and contract, there's still some stain coverage in hidden areas. And now I'll finish by spraying both of the panels in an ice even wet coat. Just using a couple shop rags again, I'm just going to wipe off all the excess on the entire panel and then I'll come back with a couple clean rags and uh, clean everything up. The one thing I've learned over the years with spraying on a wipe stain is there is a big advantage of covering a lot of area in a short period of time. However, you need to basically jump on the wiping stain right away as soon as you get done uh, spraying it because the solvents are flashing off and when you go to wipe off all the excess and come back to do your final cleanup with the light stain film that might be on there, that starts to dry even more rapidly just because of there's less uh, solvents and stain on the surface.
Here I'm just doing the actual final detail cleanup, just making sure there's no excess stain left in the corners and there's no streaks. Now I'm spraying one of two of the front panels for this cabinet surround project and once again I'm just spraying stain into the corners of the panels to make sure to get stain underneath the uh, styles, the grooves in the styles and rails for the same reason in case anything were to expand and contract that um, there's still some stain coverage there. Even though it might be a little bit heavier it's still better than having raw wood showing. Now I'm just going to finish up by spraying all the center panels on the bottom rail, again with a nice even full wet coat. Usually go back and look at the panel, make sure there's any uh, dry spots or look to be like dry streaks. And I'll just go back and spray a little extra stain over it just to make sure that it doesn't set up too quick. Now I'm just wiping uh, off the excess wipe stain again, starting on the end that I had sprayed first. This will basically allow the uh, stain to penetrate evenly uh, across the surface. Basically, first sprayed, first wiped. This again is just a preliminary wiping, just basically getting all the excess off and I'll come back and do a final cleanup and get rid of the entire film on the surface. Here I'm just blending out the panels to get rid of any streaks from wiping the stain across the grain uh, when wiping the panels. You just want to make sure that the stain looks nice and uniform um, before you uh, let it air dry and spray the sealer over it. One last final look just to make sure that everything looks perfect. Any flaws can be fixed here. The stained backs of the doors have had ample time to dry, so now I'm going to finish up by spraying the stain on the front. Following the same method, spraying the outside edge again and then working the stain inside the inside corners of the door around the panel, and then finishing up by spraying the face again on the center panel. Now I'm just wiping the uh, face off again with a couple of rags. These are a little bit dirtier. Um, once I get most of the stain wiped off then I'll come back with some clean rags and actually do the final cleanup. Here I'm doing the final cleanup with a couple new clean rags just basically making sure that there's no stain left in the corners and no smudges or smears in the stain. The stain at this point in time needs to be perfect. If it's not, I need to correct it prior to sealer. If you seal over uh, rag marks and smear marks, it's just going to make the job look even worse. Here's just a close-up of spraying the stain to get a little better idea as far as uh, how well the stain transfers out of the gun to the part. Here again, just using a couple dirty rags, wiping off all the excess, and once again I'll come back with a couple cleaner rags and do the final detail cleanup. As you can see right here, you got a couple clean rags, and just doing the same thing I did on the previous door, just making sure to make that there's no rag marks or smears or anything like that. The doors, anything stained really needs to be perfect prior to the uh, next coat of clear, because once you put the sealer over, it's pretty much locked in for life.
this wiping sand and work with is pretty easy to work with. Um, it is a commercial industrial grade wiping stain. Um, it has a recoat time of an hour. Um, it stays wet probably for I'd say at least 10 minutes but then again I basically spray it on and wipe it off right away. Here I'm using a gray coat G15 air assisted airless HVLP compliant to spray a wet coat of a fast dry vinyl sealer. Here I'll spray the back sides along with the edges of all the doors and while the back sides of the doors are drying I'll go back and spray all the cabinets and panels and trim. And once I'm done with that hopefully the doors will be dry enough where I can spray the front side. Typically I like to allow 45 minutes between the front and back coat. The pump supplying the spray gun is actually a Graco 395 ST Pro, which is actually an electric contractor's unit. And the only thing I did was to make it work with the Graco G15 gun was add a small air regulator to it along with a small air hose from the air regulator to the gun to turn it into an air assisted airless unit. When spraying cabinets or any case goods, I always like to spray the hidden areas first. In this case, it's just the inside edge of the face frame. Once I'm done with that, I'll basically start on the one side of the cabinet and work my way across to the other side. So here I'm actually starting with the right end panel. Once I'm done with the right end panel, I'll move along to the face and I'll finish up by spraying the left end panel. These furniture dollies are inexpensive and are a huge time saver for moving cabinets in a shop by yourself. This technique of spraying the face from my phone to be the most helpful and most adequate. This eliminates heavy buildup on the corners when you overlap going vertical to horizontal. Here I'm just finishing up by spraying the left end panel, starting towards me and working away from me. Here I'm just using a compressed air nozzle just to blow off the panels. I didn't show this on any of the other ones, but I just wanted to take a moment to tell you that uh, it is very important to uh, either vacuum or blow off the dust in any stain part. Because as the stain dries, you can have dust particles or lint or any airborne debris uh, land on your freshly stained surface. So it's really important to get rid of that before putting a sealer over it, because otherwise you have to sand it out basically once you uh, sand the sealer. When spraying horizontal flat surfaces, if the surface is wide enough where you can safely lean over and spray all the way to the entire back, typically I like to start spraying in front and working my way towards the back. The reason for this basically is to drift any of the dry overspray towards the unfinished surface because the wet coating going over it will dissolve it. Now because this panel was wide enough where I couldn't actually reach over it, I did end up turning the panel on the turntable. And when I start spraying again, I typically I like to spray, start where I left off, so basically start wet on wet. Here's another example of where the panel is going to be too wide for me to reach over to reach the back when spraying. So I start close to me and I work away from me, and then when it gets to the point where I can't reach anymore, I'll turn the panel on the table, and then I'll start spraying where I left off. So now I'm just going to start spraying where I left off as if I didn't stop before. I just do this for the simple reason I believe it's best to keep a wet edge when spraying. The disadvantage of this technique is if you're using a really fast drying coating like a lacquer you might have issues of where you have overspray uh, drifting onto your wet surface. If I had an issue like this here, say for example with this fast dry vinyl sealer, I would just end up adding a uh, 
retarder solvent to basically slow down the drying of the film. Now I'm just spraying the front sides of the two doors, starting with the edges and then working my way across the face. Here's just a closer view of the uh, spraying the sealer on the doors. If you notice that um, when the spray gun is triggered, you see that there's a little bit of overspray, which isn't actually that bad. I'd say the transfer efficiency on this gun with this coating, I would say, is about 65-70%. Uh, the gun that I'll be using later on to spray the top coat probably has a little higher transfer efficiency, and that's probably one of my favorites. Here I'm using a 320 grit sanding sponge to uh, sand the uh, vinyl sealer and the idea here is just to make it nice and smooth. Typically any first coat of any coating of any kind will typically raise the grain a little bit so all I'm doing here is smoothing it out at the same time creating a very fine scratch pattern for the uh, top coat or the next coat of a clear to stick to it. Very important for adhesion. I use a sanding sponge for everything here in the shop. Um, it's a very universal sponge. I stock them in two different grits and here I'm using a, a 320 grit but basically it works very well for flats and contours and tight profiles. As you can see here I'm using it to sand the inside quarter round of the profile of the inside of the door. As far as sanding the sealer goes, for me it doesn't really matter which direction I run the paper, whether it's with the grain or across the grain, because the next coat over this is going to be another clear coat. If this was a door that was uh, going to be glazed over the sealer, which essentially is another stain that goes over the first coat of clear um, to give it an additional color depth and antique look, um, I want to be more careful with sanding the sealer. I want to go with the grain as much as possible so that way when I put the glaze stain over it, it doesn't highlight all the scratches. But being that this isn't getting glazed, it's getting additional coat of clear, it doesn't really matter um, what the sanding's pattern looks like. It just needs it there basically for two reasons. Number one, to smooth out the surface, and number two, to create a very minute sanding scratch texture for the second coat of clear to stick to. If you've been noticing, everything that I've been sanding has been kind of turning to a white haze. That's just basically called powdering out or chalking out. That's typically the sign of a good sealer. Um, in this case, I actually do use a separate sealer from the final top coat. A lot of your finishes nowadays are approved for self-sealing, meaning that you can spray one coat, let it dry, scuff sand it, and then spray your final coat. Uh, I choose to use a fast dry vinyl sealer as a base coat for several reasons. The biggest reason is that it uh, gives extra moisture resistance. Here you can see a little bit more of that powdering out effect where basically all the panels now have turned uh, kind of a chalky white. And like I said, this is perfectly normal. Some sealers will definitely powder out more than others. Uh, typically if you're using a self-seal top coat it won't quite powder out as much. But then again the idea is just basically to uh, sand it smooth and create a very fine scratch pattern for your next coating to stick to. I think you get a good idea of how important sanding is, so let's move on to the top coat. Now I'm spraying the final top coat onto the back side of both of the doors, starting by banding the edges first and finishing up by spraying the back. While the back sides of the doors dry, I'll move on to spraying the cabinet, the rest of the panels, and all the trim. Hopefully by the time I'm done with that, the backs of the doors will be dry enough to where I can actually spray them. Typically I like to leave at least the minimum of an hour 
for the back to set and cure before I start working with the front. Here I'm using compressed air to blow off all the sealer dust from the sealer sanding process. It's very important to get the cabinet and all your parts as dust free as possible because it only get worse after you apply the clear coat. As far as spraying top coat, basically it's the same rule applies. I start with the inside first and work my way to the outside. Now that I've got the inside edge of the face frame sprayed, now I'm going to start with the outside of the case. Starting on one end panel, working my way across the face frame to the other end panel. The technique I use for spraying the face frame is something that I kind of developed over the years, basically to help eliminate the heavy buildup on the corners when you overlap perpendicular to each other. Basically I treat the face frame much like an end panel. Now I'll finish up the cabinet by spraying the last end panel. The outside edges of these uh, two corner moldings actually get seen, so I had to spray that first. And by the time I flip them over and actually spray the surface, there's very, very little contact on that outside edge, so this method here is pretty effective. The pump that's actually used to feed this spray gun is actually a Kremlin 1014 pump. It's an air-operated pump with a 10 to 1 ratio, meaning for every 1 pound of air pressure I give it, it gives me 10 pounds of fluid. In this case here, for spraying the top coat, I believe I'm spraying at about 40 pounds of air pressure, which is actually equivalent to 400 pounds fluid. The Kremlin MVX gun is probably my favorite for one of two reasons. Number one, it's got a very high transfer efficiency. It's probably running around 70% with the coating that I'm running. Transfer efficiency is basically determined by the amount of product that makes it to the part versus the amount of product that makes it to anything but the part. Um, in this case here, 70% of the coating I'm spraying is actually making it onto the panel versus the other 30% is actually going up the stack. The second reason I really like this gun is its weight and its trigger pull. It's very comparable to the Graco G15, but it's just a little bit lighter and the trigger pull is just a little bit easier. But then again, it's just my opinion. Once again, just using some compressed air to blow out all the dust, making sure that the part is as dust free as possible. So here you can see I'm spraying the last of the panels. I'm going to work my way across as far as I can reach it. Then I'm going to turn it 180 degrees and spray the other side. And basically start spraying where I left off. Now as you can see I'm spraying away from me so that all the overspray moves away from me. Now I'm going to start spraying right where I left off as if I didn't stop. Now this goes against every rule I have about spraying over a wet surface. But basically this coating will stay wet long enough where I can finish it up and not have any dry overspray on top of the wet surface. Here I'm preparing to spray the final top coat onto the face of the doors. I really like these little yellow tripods holding up the door. They're indispensable and they're inexpensive. They work really great for spraying doors, any surfaces, because it's got a very small point that comes in contact with the surface. This concludes the video of finishing the custom oak cabinet surround. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and any questions or comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.